We've got a seven point with a 21 and 7 eighths inch spread, Ionia County. You were on Big Buck Night and didn't get to tell the tale. What happened? Well, I was hunting them by my brothers. First time I was ever there. I took my two boys out. And I sat with the youngest one, Tori, so when he 14, his first year. I always wanted him to get the deer any shot. So about five minutes before I was going to leave, I had an appointment I had to go to. Seeing that I heard the noise, I glanced over, and this big guy's walking right toward me. Nose to the ground, probably 12 feet away. I bumped my son, Tori, and he hadn't heard it. He looked over there, and I think his eyes popped out of his head. The deer seen us about the same time. He stood up. We glanced at him, and he, he was staring back. We were staring at him. Finally, he veered off and took off. We uh, tried to struggle to our feet, and I lost my balance. Bumped in Tory. He lost his balance. Meanwhile, the deer was running away from us. But he ran around a tree, and he veered off to the right, come into a clearing, and I got one shot at it. He went behind some more uh, brush. He's headed toward my son, Ryan, who's a little bit to the west, and he said he's seen him, he's kind of staggering, and he went down. But he said he got up two times to run, about 30 yards each time before we got him. But you did. Well, and we made my appointment too. <laughs> made two, your okay. two minutes to spare. Well, very good. That was on opening day. Ed Schneider, a seven point with a 21 and 7 eighths inch spread. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, Joe Wisen to be a doe in velvet. We saw the, the turkey that was the hen with the beard. We saw the stag mule deer. Now we have a white-tailed doe in velvet. You got uh, this, oh, with a bow. Mm -hmm. What did you think when this thing came up? Well, I thought I had the big buck until my brother came around and said, no, you got a doe. <laughs> yeah, right, you said. Yeah, right? yeah, I didn't believe him, but he said, yeah, it's a doe. How many people went back and lifted up the leg on that deer and said, hmm, I'll be darned. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> Everybody thought I was crazy. I kept saying I got an eight-point doe. No way. No such thing. <laughs> so you, you did you field dress it? No, we took it home. And took it home because, I mean, that would wreck the story. Yep, yep. But you did. So this is what a seven-point doe looks like. Yeah. I mean, an, or eight-point, and in every other respect, it looked like a buck, huh? Yeah. Except It was even with in. another doe, too. Following hmm. a doe just like a buck, and... I'll be darned. That would have been interesting just to watch, huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, very good. Got that with a Jennings Black Lightning 50-pounder, Joe Weisenbach. Congratulations. Thanks. Super. <laughs> ben Hunderman. Ben, just from a practical sportsman point of view, is that you were, you grunted this in without a grunt call. Yep, I did. He was uh, right around 300 yards away from me and seen him run away. And I didn't know I was going to do, so. I had seen grunts before, and so I just went Bleh. like that, and he turned around and looked. Hold it, hold it, do that again. <laughs> I don't know. That like was that. it? Yeah, and he uh, did that like three times. and Bleh. Like that? I don't know, you do a little better in the woods. You get a little more excited, but. Well, do it, like, play like you're in the well, woods here now. I don't now. know. Huh? I don't know. <clears throat> like, it's more like that. Oh, okay, that's better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're getting into it. Try that again. <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? I don't know. No, that was it's a burp. It's getting better all the time, didn't it? That was a burp. I've heard yeah, of people like burping a, burp. a bit. I don't know. I, I no, I mean seriously. This is you know if you're gonna, you could teach this. You could teach a class in this now. You Look won, how yeah. successful you've been. Yeah. So, how how often did you make that noise? I did like three times, and he turned around and looked at me down where I was at, and he started walking my way, and he stopped and looked for a while, and I did about three more more times, and he started running my way. Sixteen yards in front of me, I shot him. My bow. Wow. First year. That's a great story. And grunted him in, and we almost heard how you did it. Here's how you, you can do seminars all around the state, but you got to do, you got to do some things like put your hand over your mouth like this and go, <laughs> like hey. that, huh? Like that, huh? Is that how you do it? I didn't. I was didn't want to move too much. He'd see me, so. Do that one more time. My mouth? Yeah, do, just do, do the best one you can. <laughs> like that. <laughs> hey, if it works. <laughs> First day I sat in my dad's tree. Yeah, that's tree stand. Well, very good. Ben Hunderman, do a good job. Get that on tape. Right. It'll sell. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Then? No. Nope. <laughs> what happened? I had knee surgery. Oh, okay. Uh, who were you, Howland or Skinner before? Howland. You were Howland and he was Skinner. Mm -hmm. But on opening day, you were Janine Howland Skinner Gutter. Yep. 
Yeah, I have to do it because my husband's allergic to the hide. So I have to do all the... And you believe that? He is. He really is. How do you know? Because I've seen him. He can't breathe when he gets touches the hide. You just gave hundreds of hunters out there a new idea. Yeah, but they got to... <laughs> No, they really got to look really bad if they, <laughs> his I mean, eyes he, get red and they close right up and he can't breathe. <laughs> he can't be from getting near a deer hide? Yeah, he is allergic to the deer hide. So I have to do all But the, he deer hunts. Now I got him into deer hunting, yeah. I just take care of the other stuff. He can shoot him and I shot this one though. <laughs> you got him, he's allergic to deer hide, but you got him into deer hunting. Now was this after you got that half million dollar in policy on him? <laughs> Close. Huh? Close. <laughs> That's very clever. That'll make a good miniseries. It now, works. So he is allergic to it. Yeah. Now, how did you get into hunting then? I've been hunting since I was a teenager. Okay. For yeah. Big hunting family? A lot of brothers or what? I have one brother. I just love to hunt. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what is it about it? Is it like, are you out there for a big buck or? No, just to get a deer, but this year it was a big one. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. You've got a, an eight pointer with an 18 and 5 8 inch spread, and you gutted it all yourself. Yep. yep. I have a, every one that I've gotten. Does, did you, are you going to have it? No, you're not going to have it mounted because this it's on it. the board here. Is your husband allergic to like mounted deer? Probably the hide, if it had the hide on it, yeah. So he hasn't gone back and seen all those deer back there? Yeah, but he doesn't get real close. He doesn't touch them. Huh. So. That's interesting. Yeah. But he can wear leather. Yeah, and he can eat the venison. Once the hide is off, it's all right. Hmm. Then he gets to do the cutting up and stuff. Make him do that work. I do the other. Does he fish? Yep, we fish. We love Don't him. tell me. He's allergic to no. scales. No. Huh? No. Oh, I see it on. He's allergic to scales. No. He eats the fish. He likes to catch them. No, he, he does the fish. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, so. Well, that sounds legit. <laughs> and I think this was legit. You got the uh, eight point with an 18 and 5 eighths inch spread with your browning 25 out 6 25 out 6 yeah. sound like you could do some seminars on this I don't know <laughs> I bet you could yeah. well congratulations Thank Janine you. what Thank a great you. story <laughs> oh no we no he has a good part to it he just um, he just <laughs> used a lot of arrows and we just don't need to do the arrow by arrow you know but anyway the interesting you have two interesting parts on this First of all, what is this when you said you put out like a half a gallon of, quote, rut urine? This is, uh, this is my product that I've been making since 89. Um, I've had tremendous success with it. And uh, it, what, fools, what is it? it fools bucks. Each of, the in, each of the ingredients in this product acts as a natural attractor to deer. But when you mix all five of them together, it uh, actually attracts bucks. Uh, every time they will come to it every time as long as they don't smell any human scent or any predator okay so but you call it rut urine yes that's that's true I've made a strong it's it's got some ingredients that make it strong smelling and uh, it actually attracts it helps to attract the deer quicker that's mm -hmm. all but that's uh, all you want to say it has five ingredients Five ingredients. You're the Colonel Sanders of. <laughs> That's it. These five secret I have a pre rut also that uh, that acts not to, to scare the does in the earlier part of the season, so as not to uh, you know miss that shot at that once in a lifetime buck who's trailing behind that doe. Okay, now <clears throat> with this buck, before you got this buck, you were in a tree. <laughs> the story gets better. Hang with it, folks. He's in a tree, and I heard Bob McGuire tell about this technique. You betcha. You were in a tree, and you had probably had, you know, a little bit of Mountain Dew or Coke or something like that. And uh, you bet. So go ahead, tell tell how you how you uh, sort of called in this deer. Well, there's many calling techniques that you can use to fool bucks, and uh, all you're doing by doing it is is to uh, create sounds that are normal sounds that bucks hear during the rut or whatever, any time of the year really, uh, they can't resist this type of an activity. So I purposely waited to and held my urine until uh, the wind had calmed down and died down and it was stone quiet. And uh, at that point I, I started to release and it sounded really loud. 
And uh, <laughs> that doesn't it? I never heard it put that way. I, I released. Yes. What you're saying is you were well, you, you peed out of your tree yeah, is what you did. That's true. <laughs> okay, let's. And and uh, within a very short time after that, I heard what I thought was this squirrel that I had seen before uh, approaching from behind. So I turned around quickly to see this stupid squirrel, and here come this guy. <laughs> and this is serious. That deer do, bucks do hear a doe urinating on the leaves, and they'll go investigate that. You betcha. So, I, well, urinating, I shouldn't use it. Now I'm going to start saying the, the doe sound. released. <laughs> the doe released. That's true. That's true. Excuse me, I have to go release. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> maybe you could use a little different. Well, now then that puts a new, new new meaning to the word of the bow hunters use a release aid yes <laughs> like, I don't know this is getting crazy but the yes. fact is you can tinkle from a tree the noise on the ground will attract a doe as will many as sons. or a buck you betcha and that's one of them and this is what you got you betcha you betcha and you explained it very well and very genteely okay look for my product this fall it's gonna be on the market no I'm gonna listen for your product okay okay <laughs> Buck fever. Buck fever. Buck fever. Okay, thank you very much. Kevin Cray. I'm just thinking. Just thinking about my new product. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to call it Tinkerbell. I'm just, I'm working on that. Dave Hamill, you uh, got a, let's see, got a, oh, okay. Here's a story on you, the part that I want you to get to. Okay. okay, goes through all this rigmarole like everybody does, you know. You get the deer, you shoot it, and so on. Uh, next thing, you did find the deer. Mm -hmm. And where were you when you found the deer? Well, at the time, um, I was just in seventh heaven, but uh, <laughs> after I gutted it and um, tried to find out where I was, I really didn't know. I was somewhere on the property that I've been hunting for three years, but I was lost big time. And this was, let's see, you got that at 7 o'clock in the evening. Mm. Ooh, getting towards the end of October, so it's uh, starting to get dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was getting pretty dark. Um, Did you have a flashlight? I had a lantern. By the time I found it, it was probably, I don't know, about 10 o'clock. And uh, I had been walking and walking. I was just taking deer trails trying to find this deer. I finally found it, and basically my equilibrium was thrown off pretty bad. <laughs> so what did you do? How long did it take you after 10 o'clock to uh, find where you were? I got home at 2. <laughs> how, how far away was it to get well, back to where you needed to? <laughs> Actually, I was uh, pretty close to a pretty well-known landmark. But, uh, like, what do you mean, a road or something? No, on the edge of a swamp. Well, what I did was uh, I didn't want to leave the deer that I took so long to track. But, so I finally I just said, heck with it. I just left a flashlight on the antlers and kept just... Walking off, coming back, walking off, coming back. And finally, I found a spot, and it's like, yeah, you moron, you know. <laughs> Let's go home, huh? So you grabbed the deer, drug it off, mm -hmm. got home at two, uh -huh. and you were lost. Big time. Okay, now being a practical sportsman, mm -hmm. what advice do you have to people who take off after the deer with a lantern at 10 o'clock at night? Compass time. Compass time? Big time. Oh, you didn't have a compass? No, I didn't. I hunted... <laughs> You I usually know where I'm at. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Never had a problem before. Well, very good. That's a good tip. Take a compass with you. He spent many hours in the woods with this buck, and it's a good one. A nine point with a 19 inch spread. Congratulations, David Hamill. Thank you. Good deal. <laughs> it's on Big Buck Night. Spike Buck, we didn't hear the story, but it has a 13 inch spread, 15 inch tines. And people say, you know, why, why do you have a spike on that? It isn't very big. It's biggest, one of the biggest spikes I've ever seen. Yeah, it's the biggest one I saw, too. Missed an eight-point opening morning. But. So you, you, you would probably rather have the eight-point than this, this one? No, this is a big deer, body size. How much did it weigh? About 150, right around there. And how wide do you suppose the spread was for the eight-point? About the same, just bigger tines and all. Just an average eight-point for Oregon County, but but you know, with this spike, you're here on stage telling all the people if you got that little squirrely eight point, you'd be a nobody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, that that's a great deer any way you look yeah. at it. But it is interesting to see a buck, and I hope more people bring uh, spikes in like this because that's very unusual.
Well, congratulations, Ron. Good deer, good deer. Allegan County. Mike Booth was a 25 and 5 eighths inch spread. That is one huge nine point. Got this at, uh, on the 20th, so the fifth day of the season with a Remington 870. What's the story? Well, it all started at 7.30. He uh, was bedding down and he stood up and I just put a new scope on my gun. And it was on seven power and I thought he was a lot closer than he looked. So I shot and completely missed. And in the process, I woke up another guy and he shot and missed. So we went and uh, there was no snow, so we, I watched where he went. We went and looked for him and searched for an hour after we found his tracks and uh, couldn't find no sign of him and I uh, decided to go through this thicket. It was about a 20 by 30 thicket, real thick. But once you got inside, all it was was pine trees and took a step and looked right and there he laid. Hmm. Well, I mean, had you hit him or not? No, he was just laying there under cover and didn't and you get got up. Him? And you one, got him right there? One shot through the neck. Wow. What a story. That, now that's, not many guys who take out after a deer missing it like that will come across it and find it. But that is one heck of a buck. A nine point with a 25 and 5 eighths inch spread. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Good to hear the story behind that. Interesting. Peter Alberta, you got this Ottawa County. You were bow hunting. And the interesting thing about this is tell me about the grunting period. Well, I'll tell you, I got there at 7 o'clock, it was still dark, and I thought, well, I'm going to try this grunting. I never really grunted much, but I had, had deer come up early thinking I'm another deer, so I grunted. He grunted back. Now, this is using a grunt call. Correct. He grunted back. I heard about three or four grunts, and then it was quiet. Well, it was still dark. I couldn't see anything, so I just stayed put. Well, it's a long story. Two hours and 45 minutes, I talked to this buck. How often would, would you grunt and he would grunt back? Well, at about, as near as I can figure, at 20 after, I fell asleep. See, I'd been hunting a long time. I hadn't seen many deer, and I figured this one here was going to be gone, too. Mm -hmm. So I just let him go. And uh, 8 o'clock, I woke up, grunted. He grunted back, and then he came out towards me. Um, maybe 8.20, I grunted again, got a response. He'd come out within about 35 yards, and then he'd, he'd go back to his lair or wherever. I, uh, I saw him at least four times in two hours and 45 minutes. Every time he'd come up within 35 yards of me. I also saw a few other small bucks that came in at the same time. It was just incredible. And you feel the grunting was what was oh, causing this? Absolutely. I've never grunted, you know, had any success. But this is absolutely the proof positive. Mm -hmm. It was great. So at, at, make a long story short, two hours and 45 minutes later, he came out where you could see him? Yeah. Well, he came, he would come within 35 yards of me. And then when he got that close, I didn't dare grunt because I was afraid mm -hmm. he'd see me. Okay. This is where it's really got tough, because finally I almost got, I've got to do something after mm -hmm. all this time. So I, when he's 35 yards away, I grunted again, hoping he wouldn't see me. Fortunately, he was to my left behind me most of the time in the thick stuff. Well, I'm peering around this big hemlock tree trying to watch this thing, and he comes towards me immediately, okay? I'm peering around this hemlock tree. He's coming closer, he's coming closer, and I'm going further and further around the hemlock tree because he's coming around the right side of the tree. Okay. You weren't in a tree stand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Around the tree. But I'm trying to... Oh, I see. One of these numbers. Mm -hmm. And my eyes are going bonkers because I don't want to, you know, I want to keep my eyes on him. Finally, I got to the point where I had to just get in position, and I turned to my right. I figured, well, I'm going to get ready. For my shot, I waited and waited and waited. See, he crossed my trail, and he must have stopped for a couple seconds, a couple minutes. Five minutes later, I looked down about 10 feet away. He's standing there to my right. Well, I'm a right-handed shooter, hopeless, okay? I waited. He walked across my trail. He walked right in front of me, 
stopped at a scrape 17 yards away, quartering away from me. Absolutely perfect shot. And you made a perfect shot. And I made a perfect shot. Two questions come to mind. You were in a tree stand. Yeah. You slept for a half hour or so. Yeah. Do you want to explain that? How do you sleep in it? Were you strapped in tightly or what? Well, it had a lot of branches underneath me. It was a big hemlock. Okay, well, that I, I've done that before myself, just people asking. It wasn't me. planned. It just happened. You know what I mean? You didn't mean to fall asleep. I didn't mean to fall asleep. Okay, secondly, do you think your snoring while you were sleeping kept that deer coming in? <laughs> Good point. Good point. You could have been. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. We'll, we'll never know that story. Yeah. What the heck? Does he snore? No. He doesn't snore. No. She, do. You do? <laughs> you got to take your wife with you. Maybe you she go. can call on the deer while you're yeah. sleeping. Well, good. Well, that's, that's an awesome story on grunting it in. Yeah. Way to have the patience and watch that tree stand sleeping. <laughs> I mean, really, because we got safety man out there who's going to be all over me for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's Peter Alberta. Shotgun Calhoun County, the 18th, a 10-point buck with a 23 and 5 8 inch spread. That's a wide spread. That's a big rack. It's a story behind it, Tom. Well, I got there to my stand, you know, I mean, where I uh, hunt, and uh, I told my cousin when we left out, I said, I'm going to get something to take back home, you know. Well, just two does come in. I picked the biggest one I shot. She took off. I heard this brush crack and I looked out and all I seen was horns. So I started shooting. And he just kept going and I kept a shooting. He'd, when he turned the last time, looked right at me, that's when the gun went clicked. He just started shaking and fell down. Huh. So you had got him? Yeah. What about the doe? She took off. You missed her? Yeah. Hope so. I'll be darned. But you did get something for the pot yeah. there. 10-point buck with a 23 and 5 8 inch spread. How many shots was that that you made? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder you lost count. <laughs> Crying out loud, seven shots. Well, way to go, Tom. That's the story with, behind with the three buck. Three-inch buck shot. With three-inch buck shot. Yeah. Very good. Well, that's it. That's our 10-point buck from Calhoun County. Yeah, right there's where I got it with a buck shot. Oh, okay. You got it with a buck shot in the antler, yeah. too. Knocked that off. Knocked that off. Yeah. Knocked that off. Pretty much peppered this deer. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> In the afternoon, Livingston County, 11 point with a 16 inch spread. Hey, that's a great buck. And you were hunting with your husband? Yes. He was in his blind and he built my blind and um, he was real proud of it. <laughs> and it was 420 in the afternoon and he was, um, I spotted him about 40 yards away behind me. He didn't make a sound. I just seen a, him moving a little bit. I didn't know if it was a buck or a doe. I was just getting ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. I had a doe permit and I wanted to get a deer. And he walked up and he was 20 yards away, never looked at me, never made a sound. And one shot, he went down. Mm -hmm. What's your hunting background? Um, I started hunting about two, three years ago when I was dating my husband because he hunts all the time. And if mm -hmm. I wanted to see him, that's what I had to do. And um, go rabbit hunting, squirrel hunting, duck hunting, everything. So you're kind of into it. Yeah. You, you like wild game to eat? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's how we eat. So I was real proud to get this because this was, I was putting my deer on the table. Well, that's so great. It was a lot of fun. Julie, that's super. An 11 point with a 16 inch spread. Thank you. Way to go. Good story. <laughs> inch spread. 70 pound dart and bow, Huron County. What's a scoop behind it? Well, we got, <laughs> how much you want to hear? <laughs> uh, not as much as you want to tell, I guarantee you. <laughs> I don't mean to be short or anything, but uh, okay, all the part like leading up to the season and sighting in and the night before in camp oh, and all yeah, you can skip okay. all that. Okay. Uh, everything, get, get right to the point where that deer's in front of you, okay? All right. I didn't get out to the woods too early this morning. It was about seven. See, I don't want to hear about that. Oh, now, no, we're at the point now where the deer is in front of you. Oh, okay. I, I, you're the one who said that. <laughs> I, know, okay. I know. Okay, so the deer's in front of you. Okay, he come around in front of me. He's about 60 yards away. And uh, I was shaking so darn bad, I had to take my arrow off the knock so I wouldn't uh, scare him away. And uh, then he went away on me. 
about the time I could see his tail only, I, uh, I gave him uh, three grunt calls and I lost sight of him. It wasn't too long after that and he made a big loop and come around on the side. And when I seen him again, all I could do was look at him and I stared at the ground. I'd look up enough just to keep track of him. And you know how everybody says their prayers? Well, he answered mine and he walked right around where I wanted him to go and uh, come through my, sh my shooting lane. I gave him a poke, I hit him a little bit late, but uh, I thought I hit him pretty decent. So I waited two hours and uh, went out with my group to start looking for him. And uh, 11 hours later, we found mm. him in the middle of a cornfield. So wow. after jumping him twice or three times, I believe it was, but uh, I ended up with a gut shot, but if you want him, you'll find him. That'll never be on TV. <laughs> but the first part will. Well, hey, way to go. Thank Congratulations, you, Paul, and I do want to hear about that big build-up sometime. Oh, do you? All right. Some other time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Paul Gehring. Harold it. From whom? From Lloyd Holmes. Sandy Holmes is where I hunt. And when I got up there that day, couldn't make up a mind, you know, what I was going to shoot. I have a hard time shooting a pump, so we decided, well, let's try the single shot this year. And that's what we did. Went out there opening morning, and just sitting around and watching the blue jays and the geese fly over and just enjoying the beauty of it all out there and not hearing any shots and sitting there with the gun in my lap and it was no shell. What do you mean no shell? I didn't load the gun and I looked out of the corner of my eye and on the ridge on the right of me here was this big buck coming. I thought oh no. So I just sat there and left him go right on by me and when he went by me, I stuck my hand in my pocket and I pulled out a piece of candy. <laughs> Don't tell me you killed this deer with a piece of candy. <laughs> and I was just so quiet about it, I just put my hand in the next pocket, brought out the shell, slipped it in there, and I stood up and I shot, shot the chamber and closed it. And when I did, he heard it. And he looked at me, and when he looked, I knew if I wouldn't have fired then, I would have lost him, and I thought, no way. And I fired it, and I shot him in the back, and he went down. And I thought, wow, after all these years, this is really great. And then I yelled for my friend, Sandy. I said, Sandy, because it went down. I thought, oh, I got to get some help and get this deer out of here now. And the, rat, the deer started to raise up on me. And I thought, oh, no, he's not getting away. Boy, I just flipped that shell back out of that chamber, and I grabbed another one, put it right in there, and I went right after him, that and that was it. Mm. Now, how many deer have you taken? This is my first one. Your first deer, and how many years of hunting? Over 20. I started out bow hunting, mm -hmm. and then the kids started coming along. Mom got left home, mm -hmm. and then I went ahead, and I just started going back at it. And just, I just love it. I love being out in the outdoors and getting back at camp and playing cards and listening to all the stories. I huh. listened to a lot of stories and never thought I'd tell my own. And you got a great one to tell now. Yeah, I borrowed the, the gun and when I shot their best deer on camp because when we picked it up and we looked at it, she said, oh, those guys are going to kill you. They've been after this deer all season. Well, that is, that's a 13-pointer with an 18 and 3 8 inch spread. Yep. Mary, good story. <laughs> tell Thank that you. at deer camp for many years to come. This brow tine here, man, that's a lot longer than the other one. Kind of a strange buck from that standpoint, but uh, but a whopper. Nine point with a 24 and a half inch spread down in Allegan County. Allegan County. Woodlot? Yeah, cornfields are on. Last year we took an eight pointer on a two man drive. I pushed it to a buddy of mine. This year he pushed this nine pointer to me. Mm. Yeah. And that, is this the biggest buck you've seen in the woods? Yeah, it, anywhere. I've hunted all over, UP, northern, lower, all over. Never seen a buck with horns like this before. I know, that's outstanding. That makes a great mount. Opening day, he was on big buck night with a nine pointer, 24 and a half inch spread. One of the wider nine points you'll ever see. Congratulations. And one on of the that. wider ones you'll ever see. <laughs> Take care, Fred. Uh, one of the pointier ones I'll ever see. Okay, George, you were muzzle loading hunting on opening day of firearm season. Why the muzzle loader? Well, the ones they're making nowadays are more accurate than the shotguns, for real. I, I believe that, anyway. I shot this one at 90 yards, and it dropped, it hit him right where we're supposed to. And, so, uh, but I, mean, I mean, the fact that you only get one shot doesn't bother you? 
as long as it's no, accurate? No, even when I'm hunting a shotgun, I, one shot's all I want. I, I won't take a chancy shot. It's got to be a clean shot or I'm not going to take it. So you must have experimented with a lot of different types of slugs? A lot of them. Yeah. You ever used a rifled barrel on shotgun slugs? I haven't personally, but a lot of the, my friends have, and they've even give those up and went back to the smoothbore and the, with the sabots. But hmm. I still think the muzzle loaders are more accurate. I'm shooting a night legend. Uh, okay, with, with are you shooting sabot? Yes, sabot slugs. Sabot and, and what bolts. kind of group do you get at 90 yards? Oh, two inch. Can't beat that. No, I've got. Uh, I only owned the gun like two weeks before season, so I didn't have a lot of time to play with it. But I've got a group of guys I hunt with that are shooting 125 yards with a two inch group. Huh. So they. Well, that's a different twist on hunting in shotgun country with the muzzle loader for the accuracy. Yeah. Who would have ever guessed? Well, George, you proved it. Yeah. With the big buck. Thank you. Good tip. Something to think about, hunters. Bob, very few people got that. Remington 870. Bob, you were on Big Buck Night holding this very proudly and yes. didn't get to tell the tale. What's the tale? Well, I've gone quite a few years without getting any deer. And uh, the guys at work figured I should have these glasses for uh, <laughs> older hunters. Uh, I see. Hold it. Well, uh -huh. I'll have to open this up. But right here it says... Helps older hunters hunting glasses to see more deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see what we got well, it, here. It helped this year. Oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll open these up here. On one side, we have a deer in crosshairs. On the other side, we have uh, some <laughs> calibrated yardages. And you'll notice the deer on here has got 11 points. Oh, so this was done after the fact? It was done a year ago. Mm -hmm. So you got these glasses a year ago as a joke? Yes. Yes. And you came out and got an 11 point this year. Yes. Don't tell me you were wearing these glasses. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, just a second. I got to try these out yeah, here. Yeah, you can borrow them if you'd like. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no. Hey, this is amazing. Yeah. See that you see that deer every time, can't you? You can. Yeah. And it's walking. Yeah. It's walking right yeah. in front of me. Yeah. Oh, this would make hunting really exciting. Great. Yeah. My golly, what a deal. <laughs> all I need now is bifocals on the bottom and mm -hmm. I'll be all set. Yeah. You know, put some little rabbits and, uh, <laughs> and raccoons down there. Yeah. Perfect deer hunter's glasses. There. We gotta go into business on this. <laughs> Robert Wood with the deer hunter's glasses yeah. and the 11 point buck. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. And that's the story. Here, you want these glasses? <laughs> no, I got there. <laughs> okay, congratulations. <laughs> now we'll take them off. We'll give Bob a round of applause here. Huh? I know the problem. It does. They fall out and they get down in my eyes. Uh, Branch County, the 23rd of October, with a Darton 60 pounder. Yep. Now let's get to the cool part of this story. This is a 12 point with an 18 inch spread. The cool part of the story is that you had that 60 pounder drawn back on a 10 point. That's correct. Um, I guess I owe a, owe a vote of thanks to uh, Starlight Archery for helping me with my uh, archery skills and my brother for being persistent and having me go out the night before and set up a tree stand. Um, I got out there in about uh, 8.30 in the morning. I seen a doe come through, and she kept looking back over her shoulder, so I thought uh, there's got to be something else back there. And um, a few minutes later, a 10-point came out. I watched the 10-point come across, and the doe went in front of me, and they were about 17, 18 yards out in front of me. And I drew on the 10-point, and uh, I was about to release, and I seen a movement out of the left corner of my eye, and uh, I seen this, this one here walk in. So I released, I let, let the bow back down. I let the doe and the 10 point go through. And this one came in and um, he turned broadside in front of me and was quartering away. And um, I let go and hmm. put it through both lungs. He went about 50 yards and dropped. I watched the whole thing from the tree stand. Wow, you're lucky so, that thing didn't turn around and go the other way or wander yeah, off. You've never uh, had that happen, huh? Well. I've, I've teased my brother a lot of times. He's, he's actually a better bow hunter than I am. He's gotten a lot more deer. And I told him, I said, I'll never let a small deer go or a, or a one with a rack, you know. And uh, uh, when this one came in, I, I, when the 10 point came in, I thought, what am I doing? I'm going to mess around. I'm going to lose them both. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I seen this one coming, I thought, well, uh, I'm going to take, take a chance and let that one go, and hopefully he'll come through. And they didn't know mm -hmm. I was there. So. 
Very so good. So I was lucky and, and got one. You were lucky and <laughs> got a great buck right there, and that yep. is a 12 point. Yep. Congratulations Thank on you, that. Fred. Larry Messenger. You get those, those cool kind of glasses, you can always see that 11 point out of the corner of your eye. Elaine Warner. From Hills, and you, you were hunting with a Stevens, one of the predecessors to Savage. They joined up years ago. Model 940A, single shot, 410 slug. Right. How long have you been hunting? Since I was 14. With that gun? Yep. Do you use that gun for rabbit hunting or anything else? No, or just, I just go deer hunting. Just go deer hunting. Mm -hmm. And this buck you got, let's hold that up. That's a 14 point yep. with a, what is the spread on that? 19 and an eighth. Mm -hmm. Oh my, there, that's a better picture. We're gonna have to edit this for TV. There's the good picture we want to use for TV. In fact, if we could, if we could borrow, did you send that one in? Mm -hmm. Use your form, okay, yeah. good. Because this one here, you might as well cut the camera off, John. Okay. Well, we said it's 70. Washtenaw County, you were on Big Buck Night. You got a 12 point with an 18 and three quarter inch bed. Were you down at the buck pole? No. At Washtenaw? No. no. This was darned. taken during bowl, so there was no oh, buck yeah. pole. That's right. This would have been a real raunchy deer by the no, time yeah, we got there. Yeah. Okay, what's the story behind it? Well, um, I got up there late, and uh, I didn't want to put my tree stand up and make the noise. So I put my tree stand on the ground and sat on my tree stand. Well, before th I did that, I hung my ammonia bottle out in the tree. Uh, and it seems to always work for me. So uh, uh, I was sitting on my tree stand, and in come a four-point. I said, man, this is great. And all of a sudden he stopped and uh, turned around, walked out, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, 20 yards behind me, the big boy was standing. Hmm. And uh, he just, uh, he come up alongside me 10 yards away, and uh, I just drilled him. Well, tell me about this ammonia bottle. What, well, what I've seen it on your show a couple years ago. And uh, I was hunting over his scrape, and i seen it on your show, so I tried it a couple years ago, and it works. Um, so what do you do? Do you poke a hole in the I bottom? I poke and let a it hole drip? in the bottom and unscrew the cap and let it drip. And uh, anybody that says it doesn't work uh, hasn't huh. tried it, I'll but it does work. Because I've had bucks run by and stop dead in their tracks and come right back to it. Huh. And here's proof of the pudding right here. Scott Preston's 12 point with an 18 and 3 quarter inch spread. Congratulations on that, Scott. Good story. I'm glad that that uh, works for you. Richard? Yeah, I like the way you just let me hold the heavy side. Thanks a lot. <laughs> What's the story here? I need here? to help. I know. What's the story on this box? Well, I went out uh, the first morning of deer season, and I heard this one grunting. And while he was grunting, it was a doe came probably 35 yards of me. Well, I didn't have a doe permit. My son-in-law was sitting across the hill from me. He had a doe permit. So I shot in front of the doe permit, in front of the doe. And she took it off up over the hill. I'm sitting there trying to reload, and this guy comes out. Mm. I'm using the muzzle loader. He walks out and throws his head up on me and shoot me if you can, and up off over the hill he goes. Boom, boom, and I thought, well, there goes my deer season. Walked up over the hill, and a young kid was up there. Said he shot at it and missed it. I went back in the next morning. He came right back around the hill to me, and I downed him. Got him with your muzzle loader. Yes, sir. Okay, you're another one of these hunters who hunts with a muzzle loader during regular firearm season. How come? It's uh, probably the best gun to use. More accurate. You take your time. You're going to shoot for one shot, and that's all you need. Well, hold it. You said that's all you need, but tell us about the day before again. You want us to play well, that tape back? Well, uh, if I'd have been shooting at him, one shot would all I would have been. Oh, didn't you miss a deer the day before, though? No, I didn't. Oh, you, did? I, oh, you didn't, I didn't shoot? I didn't miss the deer. I shot in front of the deer to run it up over to my, to my son-in-law. He was up on top of the hill, and I was down in a cove. Oh, I see. And she went up to a right away and came back around the hill. Hmm. Huh. So you use a lot of strategy in your hunting. No, not a lot. It's just enough. I think. <laughs> Richard Birch, way to go! Congratulations on that. Hey, what a deal! Muzzle loading hunters are coming up with great stories. Okay, we. Here's a, here's a real picture here. This looks really good. I'm here with the Pesubas. <laughs> Look like a tower on each side, huh? Yeah. So you guys, the Pistons haven't been doing too well, but uh, <laughs> but how's your team going? Well, our good. team's doing all right this year. <laughs> your team <laughs> is doing. Yeah, I guess. We'll hold those up here together. Uh, you guys hunt up in Marquette County, 
And an interesting thing that I wanted to hear about this is you use two-way radios. That's correct. All now, the time. all the time. Okay. Yep. Now, a lot of people say, "Well, that isn't really fair," you know, because huh. you're using radios and electronics. However, there's a big downside to two-way radios. While you're sitting there and the deer's coming in, and <laughs> hey, Bob, <laughs> you know all that business. That's correct. We have a lot of that happen to us, believe it or not. Well, yeah. No, I believe it because I've been Check with good. hunters. Check good. <laughs> Look around before you talk. Yeah, but you can't tell who you're talking to and you're... I'm talking to my brother or my son, either one, and we know what we're doing. That's the way we keep touch. That's why we get bucks like this continuously. How? We how? scout and move. Well, we go for the day. We fanny pack in for the day, and we're in for the day. We come out at 8 o'clock at night pulling these two bucks out, take you back to camp till 10 o'clock. That's common for us. We're in the woods at daylight, and we're in the woods when it's dark. So you, d you, don't, you do not have blinds that you set up and stay no, in? No, we don't set up no blinds, no baiting... We're not against it, but uh, we like to set the runways, walk the ridges, push for each other. The three of us work for each other all the time. My uh, son and my uh, brother drove this nice buck right to me, going down and scouting away to get that 12 point out that he shot just uh, an hour and a half uh, prior to that. I want to see what this is like. I want to see what this, no, no, I want to see what this is like. Okay, you know, like I'm telling my story. Okay, How's it feel? we're trying to get that buck over there, and that one was coming by, and I got this one, and then I, I shot in front of this one and scared it around the hill. So, so that one, yeah, this. the Kasubas do this, and then I put this under my arm and called on the radio. Jeez, you guys, we're busy. We talk You're with busy, our hands, out but there. we're happy out there. But when we got horns, we can't talk with our hands. Otherwise, it'd be dangerous up here for you. You know. But you, so there's three of you, and you got three radios. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you, what do you say to each other, uh, you know, like when you're calling, you go, psst, hey, Bob. Or you, won't, you won't believe this. Uh, my son leaves his on all the time, and I, I'm, most of the time I do too. He's the guy that we have trouble getting in contact with. But when, I'll tell you when he comes on, when he finds a sign, knows what's going on, on comes the radio, Vern and I get in position, and things start happening. So you find a fresh, fresh sign. Uh, were you always hunting snow or what? Well, whenever. We, yeah, whenever we can. What happened here, for an example, is he shot this one opening day. Here we go again. Okay, watch. <laughs> I shot, and I shot this one opening day. We were pretty happy about that. We were very satisfied at the time. So <laughs> the Sunday after that, which was seven days later, I sat on the spot where he got this one. This one. And I sat there till 9 o'clock, and I got a little nervous, and I walked up on the mountain behind me, and I seen some real nice deer sign. Was it that one? Well, I'm going to guess it was this one. And I says... I called on the radio, I said, you won't believe this, but I see a hell of a track. So I start dogging this one around, and I come up on him down a skid row, and I look up, and about 180 yards off, he's standing right broadside. And I pull up my gun like that, and I'm standing. <laughs> Look at I, this. Look at hey, this. I, no, I, no horns at the full time. Full of antlers, yeah. <laughs> I squeeze the trigger like that, and I watch my bolt go clunk. It didn't fire, and the deer like that, and it took off full blast. I racked a shell like that, shot again, and the deer stopped behind a big tree, and I saw its neck, about that much of its neck. And I said, it's now or never. Easy. <laughs> Let him have it, and down he went. 190 yards I paced off. True. And when I got up on this deer here laying there, I was kind of excited and really enjoying myself. And I looked around on the deer sign, and I said, oh, my God, there's bigger tracks yet. So I called my brother on the, radio, the radio, and he says, you won't believe this. I said, but I got one down, but you should see the tracks of the deer that was with him. And he said, okay, I'll set up here. And I started looking for a place to pull this one out. And I'm going down the skid row looking for a place. And I hear a shot up on the hill where John's setting. He gets on the radio. He says, yours better be pretty big, Bob, because you ought to see mine. So this is what happened. If there's much more to this story, I'm going to call in for a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no end to it, Fred. There's no, no end, end to it? it? No. 37 years of hunting. 40 years for me. I shot my first buck uh, exactly two and a half miles from where I got these two deer just 40 years ago. Hmm. I yeah. bet you have a big mountain of antlers at home. Well, Quite we do, yes. Yeah. These, these four bucks right here this year were shot within uh, a quarter of a mile of each other. These two bucks were shot within 150 yards of each other. And what about these two? Within a quarter of a mile of each other. Yeah, yeah. all okay. in the same area. Yeah, but some days we might be hunting in a place like that, Fred, and, and two days later we might be 25 miles from there, honestly, yeah. hunting another area. We go scouting and looking for sign. Yeah. We stayed and hunted the whole season after we filled our permits scouting. with a cam recorder, scouting for next year, huh. the whole season. Yeah. 
you don't guys, give up. Just not, tell of course, do. hoping my son would pick up one while we were hunting, but he didn't. But. Now, one last question. Do you have one of those uh, those radio things like the like their <laughs> operators have for no, the telephones? No, really or, or Garth Brooks <laughs> <laughs> with the little <laughs> microphone like and all? That's Nothing like that. Idea. Huh? That is a good He likes that really, idea. <laughs> really, us Kasubas don't need the radios. We got enough volumes. When something like this happens, we don't really need the radios. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys tell a great story. Yeah. Okay, watch it now. Yep. Congratulations on it. We really that. enjoyed ourselves here today. Hey. Too. Great job. Okay, what a story. <laughs> oh, Breaker 1-9. Good, good, good. Look at this one. We didn't get to go into the details except that this was, you were using a semi-auto Savage 12 gauge. And then it was stuck. You had to pull out the shell each time and throw it on the ground and shoot again and take out the shell. It didn't eject it all the way. Have you ever cleaned it? Yeah, yeah. We've had it in the blacksmith twice. Or blacksmith. <laughs> the blacksmith. <laughs> I see. I think we're getting to the problem here. After you bang it on a tree a few times, you know, then you have to take it to the blacksmith. Yeah. <laughs> Be a good Chinese fortune cookie. Mm. Woman who takes gun to blacksmith will have trouble ejecting shells. You just spend a few minutes before you go hunting going, remember to pull the shell. Remember to pull the shell. Yeah, but if you just do one shot. Well, I thought that was how it worked, but it doesn't. Okay, well, this was your first buck. Yeah. And you had a little trouble with the shell, pulling it out. Yes. But you got it, and this was down in Washtenaw County. On, on the farm. On the farm. On the farm. Have you, how long have you been hunting? Uh, about two or three years with my husband and his family and some friends. And uh, Before the kids were born, I hunted one year. But it was too cold that year. <laughs> you, you were down on, yeah, at the buck pole. Yeah. Didn't you have the deer with the funny foot? Yeah, yeah. What, what was the deal on that foot? Oh, uh, well, they just figured that it got injured when it was younger, and they're... They don't, you know, know for sure what happened. Hmm. That was an odd-looking foot, though. I remember that at the buck. Yeah, it was clubbed. It looked. It just made like a fist mark in the ground. Did you see the deer walk? Did it walk okay? Yeah, because it came over the hill and it was real slow. And a friend of ours, Rich, had done um, shot, shot at the deer, and I thought he had got it, and he just spooked up another one. And he, this just very calmly came over the hill, and I thought, oh my God, it's a big body. It's a big black body. Then I lifted his head. And then it was a buck, <laughs> mm. and then I got buck fever. And I pushed my heart back into my chest and lifted up my rifle. And shotgun. And we're gone. Shotgun. Blacksmith. <laughs> Black Blacksmith, Black gunsmith, gun. rifle, shotgun. <laughs> hey, what the heck. But it is a buck nonetheless, a 12-inch yeah, with a 22-inch spread. Congratulations, Christine. Thank you. Super good story. Bill Lacey. Lacey was on Big Buck Night with a 15-point bow hunting Oakland County, which, by the way, in our magazine coming out, when it comes out, we have some stats. Oakland County really produces quite a few big bucks. It's a scoop behind this 15-pointer. Uh, well, um, it was Friday night. We had about an hour and a half of daylight. My buddy Tony said, let's go give it a try, get up in our stands. Uh, when we got to the hay field, this is the back of my dad's farm. When we got to the hay field, there was three doe already standing in the field grazing. So we had to sneak way around, which took us longer to get to our stands. Mm -hmm. And well, I got up in there, sitting in my stand for about 20 minutes, and my neighbor starts playing his stereo out the back of his house, about half a block down the road. Sounded like I was at a rock concert. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, I ain't gonna see nothing tonight, you know? There's the three does went into the woods, they got scared by it, and, and then there was horses in the field, you know, my dad's got race horses. They come in and start grazing right by me, you know, making a lot of racket right by my bait pile. I'm thinking, this is the worst night I ever could have picked to go out uh, bow hunting, you know. I was just about to get down, he come crashing in. I thought he was a horse, you know, another horse messing. They were making noise all around me. Then I started, you know, he come in uh, within about 40 yards of me and he started to turn away and I thought, oh, I ain't gonna get a shot at him, you know. And it was starting to get dark. I, I didn't realize his rack was this big. I, I knew he had horns, but uh, and he got within about 30 yards of me, and uh, he finally stopped in between two, three, two or three trees. There was a space about this big in between, 30 yard shot, and I took it mm. and got lucky. Great with a bow. Awesome. Well, that turned out to be a great evening, the 22nd of October. Yeah, sure did. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Interesting Ted. to hear the story behind that one. 15 point buck from Oakland County. Dennis White, what was the scoop on this one? Well, it started out uh, opening day and hadn't seen anything till 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, uh, I looked down and noticed this deer in front of me. 
and shortly stayed there in, in pretty thick brush. I like to hunt where mm -hmm. it's thick and uh, kept moving around. I, I noticed it was a buck. Couldn't get a shot, kept waiting, waiting, finally got an opportunity to get a shot and missed. And it was a nice eight point. I have a, a scope on my shotgun, so in the mm -hmm. meantime, I could tell what it had. Took off. I figured, well, this is it. You know, you only get one chance. About an hour and a half later, my brother in law comes down and says, uh, Hey, I got a buck. He said, You want to help me drag it out? Well, not really. I'd kind of like to stay here, but I said, Yeah, I'll come help you out. So I went and helped him drag it out. About 12.30, I get back to my blind. Figure, you know, this getting the afternoon, nice quiet. And uh, just hadn't been sitting down on my little pail, and I've got just a ground blind. Sit down on the pail and happened to look down, there's like a little creek crosses. I saw these, all I could see was antlers come across the creek. Couldn't see the deer at first. And pretty soon I could see the deer. And the next thing, he disappeared. He went behind this little hill. And I said, oh my God, you know. He's going to go into the neighbors and some undeserving individual is going to shoot this deer and I'll never get my opportunity. Is so, that like anybody else would have been? Oh, right, right. Yes, individual. absolutely. Yeah. I would have been, you know, I'm deserving. So <laughs> I jumps out of my stand and I'm standing on top of this little knoll looking all around. And here he comes right, right out in front of me, walked right towards me, didn't even notice me, but walked right in front, had his head up, didn't have his head down like they mm -hmm. typically do, had his head up just like he owned that woods. And he did until about two seconds till I got the sight on him and mm -hmm. shot him. Well, very good. But well, that was a 14-point with a 21-and-a-half-inch spread. Huron County up there Huron in the county. Phone. Congratulations. Thank you. Very good. Dennis White. What, what the heck? What, little brother here hanging under the trophy? You won yep. a buck contest? Yeah, last weekend at the Deer Spectacular. Took second place in the eight points. Wow. Second place, and this is one heck of an eight-point. It has a 22 and a half inch spread, Van Buren County. You got it with the Mossberg 20 gauge. Is that a, a pump? Yeah, six shot. And that was your first year hunting? Yep. You know all about it, sounds like. Yeah, I took my dad's spot. Oh, your dad. What do you mean you, you took it? He gave it to you or you just took it? I told him that's where I wanted to sit. <laughs> and why did you pick that spot? Because during bow season, I saw a bunch of deer there. I knew they were coming through. There's a lot of trails. Have you been hunting for what for a couple years with a bow? No, this was my first year with the bow too. Huh? Reading magazines or yeah. what? Learning the ropes of it? Yeah, I hunted with my dad a lot. I just sat with him when mm -hmm. I was little. Now that you're big, you got a big buck. Get yourself some CB radios and hook up with the Kasubas. I think they want you. <laughs> they want you as a part of their hunting party. Well, very good. Congratulations, Keith. Thanks. Way to go. That is a big buck. Guess was the shed from the year before? Yes, sir. How do you know for sure? Well, we don't know, but it was in the same area, kind of. Same area, and it, uh, boy, it looks like a match. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. It looked like this was maybe a little bigger the year before. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> How old was this deer, do you know? Uh, about four and a half, DNR said. Okay, well, that's about the time when it grows its peak antlers, and this was down in Cass County. Was a scoop behind it? Well, I was uh, sitting in my blind before dark because my dad makes me get out there, you know. And Mean guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so about 7.30, I think it's time for some candy. I always bring candy with me. And I lean over, and right to my left, here comes this big buck walking out about 10 foot from me. With his head down, he didn't even see me. and So I dropped my candy and tried to get my bearings, and... He was sniffing a scrape, and I turned over and shot him. Huh. But he fell down and got back up and started running, and there's the swamp. My dad always tells me, if you let that deer go in the swamp, when you shoot him, you can go in after him. So I didn't let him go in the swamp. I shot eight times at him. Eight? <laughs> well, you had to reload, I hope. Yeah, he kept getting up and running, and huh. I didn't want to lose him. So. <laughs> I had kind of a toss-up between that candy bar and shooting again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, very good. Your first deer, Jacob Robinson. That's a heck of a buck. You found. You, when did you find this? A year before or when? Yeah, year before. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Jacob did a good job. See, he got he got this deer here with this. I learned this from the Kasubas that this deer came up and this was. And then and then I thought to myself, well, let's see. There you go. Thank you. That's uh, how am I doing? Am I working with these animals? That we've ever seen and of course over the radio 
Bob, you won't believe this. This is weirder than the last one. Got it with a bow, 85 pound. Boy, you crank a big bow. I had to shoot that far. How far was it? About 45 yards. And, you, and I know, here's the story. Came, came over the hill and all I saw was, was antlers. Huh? You, look, you look like a monster with a radio, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, it, looked, it looked pretty strange. It, it, I didn't know for sure what it was when I got it. And then after I found it, I said, oh, I shot that. <laughs> but it's, so. I mean, its ears had to be bigger than these <laughs> yeah, antlers. Yeah, they were. <laughs> is, this, is this seven points aside? Or, uh, it, what's um, the explanation on this? Has any biologist told you? Or? No, no. I couldn't get no answer from anybody that just that it was strange. <laughs> oh. I see. I didn't know how strange it was. Good, my second, this is my second deer. And after I find him, telling me, oh no, it's not supposed to look like that. And it's strange. Did this, did this have like, like ears like that? Like we're tall and narrow? Um, no, it just had normal ears. Oh, Cause I thought maybe we had a jackalope there, but I guess not. <laughs> that is interesting. I don't know, racks like that, I think are extremely I cool. Would, um, if uh, you would be interested, I'd like to donate it to the museum. Oh, awesome. Because it is strange. <laughs> yes, it is strange. <laughs> and it reminds me of you, so I think we should okay. put it in the museum. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that would be great. We'll put that up in a yeah. prominent place where people can see that. That's very unusual and try to get some theories as to why it's strange. <laughs> That's certainly say. Thanks an awful lot. Look forward to hanging that up. I, that stuff, I think, is very cool. Thank you, Mike Reynolds. You'll see that buck in the museum. <laughs>
he was more of a typical rack, but as he got old, you mm -hmm. know, it's deformed. Okay. Okay, so, well, so, you know uh, your stuff. And, uh, so this was your buck from Big Buck Night. Right. Show me your elk. Okay. I had no idea at the time that you were also an elk hunter who drew yep. an elk permit. Uh, I applied for elk permit for uh, since 1984 when they start uh, doing it. And when I got the, the permit, I called the Kazubos. You know, I hooked up with those guys there. Are you serious? Uh, yes, I am serious. Uh, Did you call them on the phone or use yeah, your radio? I, no, I called them on the phone. Okay. I picked up the phone and called uh, John's <laughs> uncle, Lou. I called Lou Kazubo and I had Lou and his other brother, Chum, uh, as my guides. and uh, we